TikTok just saved itself $300,000 a year because an intern decided to rewrite a critical Go service in Rust instead. But the most interesting part isn't just the rewrite, it's what the intern discovered about Rust's strengths, its limitations, and when it makes sense to use Rust instead of Go in production. Now, for some context, TikTok has this feature called TikTok Live, where users can live stream themselves to share educational content, give life advice, and in general, pass on wisdom to the next generation. <laughs> Ice cream, so good. Think of the ice cream. Think of the heart me. I heard you too. During these TikTok live streams, viewers can buy virtual coins with real money and then send virtual gifts to the streamers during the live stream. And this is where the problem starts. Wu Xiaoyun, an internet TikTok, discovered that this payment service that was handling these TikTok live purchases was frequently setting off alarms because it was hitting over 90% CPU utilization rates. And this was because some of the endpoints on the service were serving millions of queries per second. Luckily, Wu knew that when it comes to any sort of performance problems, there's only one solution. The payment service was originally written in Go, but Wu wanted to rewrite some of the CPU-intensive endpoints in Rust to take advantage of Rust's performance characteristics. Zero-cost abstractions, fine-grained control over memory allocations, no garbage collection overhead, etc. And after getting approval from his manager, Wu considered three approaches to implementing his new Rust-powered endpoints. The first idea was the most straightforward. Just write a brand new Rust microservice from scratch and have it handle the same endpoints. The problem is all the upstream services that call the Go service would now need to change their code to call the new Rust service instead. That creates a ton of migration pain and potential points of failure. So Wu scrapped this idea pretty quickly. The second approach, the one Wu actually chose, was a lot smarter. Instead of replacing the Go service, he deployed a Rust version of the CPU-intensive endpoints in a separate cluster under the same service name. And then he could gradually reroute specific traffic, like the CPU-intensive endpoints, to the new Rust cluster. That way, the upstream services didn't have to change any code. And he could also reuse the existing end-to-end -end tests for the payment service. And if something broke, he can simply flip a switch and reroute all the traffic back to the Go service. There was also a third option that was more experimental and pretty interesting. The idea was to pull all the shared core logic into a Rust library crate, and then call that library from the Go service using CGO and CBindGem. CGO allows Go to call C directly. And because Rust can expose C-compatible functions, you can bridge the two languages. Now, this sounds good in theory, but in practice, Seco adds a lot of overhead every time you cross that language boundary. So if you're calling into Rust code on every request, then you basically cancel out all your performance gains. In the end, Wu opted for approach two, setting up the Rust endpoints in a new cluster. And he broke it down into three key steps. First, he rewrote the CPU-intensive endpoints in Rust, keeping the logic identical to Go. Now, that wasn't actually as easy as it sounds. For example, Go uses zero values, things like empty strings and zeroed out structs by default, while Rust uses the option enum to represent optional values. This meant Wu had to be careful about how data is initialized and handled to avoid subtle bugs. He also had to adjust some data structures to fit Rust's strict ownership rules. After making sure the logic was identical, Wu tuned performance by reducing unnecessary memory allocations and optimizing cache usage through data-oriented design, keeping data types small and CPU-friendly. Next, he verified correctness and speed by replaying real production traffic in a staging environment, sending the same request to the Go version and the Rust version, and comparing the responses. Then came load testing, measuring how much traffic each version could handle and how much CPU it burned. Finally, he slowly rolled out the Rust service to production, starting with 1% of traffic and then slowly ramping up while monitoring latency rates, CPU utilization, and error rates. If something broke, he could flip a config and send everything back to the Go service. So what were the results of the rewrite? Honestly, pretty wild. Wu's Rust implementation ended up cutting average latency by around 30%, and the P99 latency, that's the slowest 1% of requests, dropped by 76%. But the biggest win was CPU efficiency. The Rust service could handle the same throughput as the Go service with only half the compute resources. At TikTok scale, Wu calculated that his Rust implementation would save TikTok $300,000 a year in compute costs if Wu's service was fully deployed in all regions outside of the US and EU. Not bad for an intern project. So now we get to the interesting part, Wu's takeaways. Wu's main takeaway is that Rust isn't magic, it's a trade-off. You get increased performance, but decreased developer productivity. And the performance of Rust code can be slow if you write bad Rust code. This is really important because if you're a really good Go developer that tries to write Rust code and writes it poorly, then you can end up with worse performance. Overall, Wu categorizes Go as the 80-80 language. You get 80% of the performance with 80% of the developer productivity. This means good performance and a quick development cycle. So when does it make sense to use Rust? 
Before rewriting something in Rust, Wu suggests trying to optimize the existing implementation. After that's done, Wu's rule of thumb is to rewrite it in Rust when you can get economies of scale. For example, when your tool, service, or library has very high usage. So you can justify the man hours required for the rewrite. Wu also suggests rewriting code in Rust that doesn't have to be modified often. The idea is rewrite it in Rust once and then have a blazingly fast component that you can rely on into the future. So this isn't really about Go versus Rust. It's about knowing when to use the right tool for the job. Wu didn't chase hype. He found a real bottleneck and proved Rust's value where it matters most. And that's what smart engineering looks like. So if you want to be like Wu and rewrite your company's Go code in Rust, click the link in the pinned comment below. Also, let me know what you guys think about this rewrite in the comment section below. Hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to stay rusty.